Welcome to the Echo Ratings Eventing Podcast. Welcome to the Echo Ratings Eventing Podcast and a cup of tea with none other than a man who is number five in the FEI World Rider Rankings. It is Tom McEwen, and it is a cup of tea show that is supported by NAF. We are absolutely delighted that for the next few months, NAF are on board supporting a cup of tea show, which you guys have been loving over the last couple of months. And who better to get us underway with the first show than a team NAF rider? Tom McEwen, welcome back to the podcast. Well, thank you very much for having me, and thank you very much for NAF for putting me forward. So, yeah. Oh, good to be back on. Oh, we are looking forward to catching up on everything that has been going on in Team McEwen over the last few months and looking forward to a very exciting year. First question is, as I usually ask our guests on a cup of tea shows, what are you drinking? Uh, Tom Carlyle was drinking a martini, which I, I don't think anybody else has quite gone that exotic since. No, I'm a little less sophisticated and I've just got a squash. It's the Frenchman in him. What what flavored what <laughs> it's, flavored it's not, squash? It's not six. I think it's orange. I, ha- okay. I haven't gone for it yet. <laughs> you think? <laughs> well, look, it is you good to have you range. on the show. Let, let's catch up over the last couple of months. How has the winter been for Team McEwen? The winter's been actually not too bad. Um, horses have been out. The young horses have come in. We've sort of added to the range of horses with a few really really nice uh, younger additions to the team. And actually, sort of, we've just been ticking away, lots of training, and sort of looking forward to getting out to 2021. Looking which forward hasn't to really getting started. it started. I know, looking forward to getting it started. We're still waiting for it to get started, but not long. How many horses have you got in for the year, Tom? So I think we've got sort of 16, 17. So we've got plenty. We've got plenty, okay. pl- plenty in with the young horses. So yeah, the aim was to slightly cut down from last year because I was very, very busy last year. And we've sold a few and a few have gone different directions. So um, we got really lucky to have a bit of an older string coming through this year. Um, and actually sort of for me this year is about sort of, so I'm very lucky to have the two old, older boys, but I've got three coming up, three or four coming up uh, but underneath them that really will be five-star horses next year as well. So for me, for them, it's about sort of um, consolidating everything they're doing. So for next year, we're really hopefully flying. Although every every year at the moment is next year. <laughs> <laughs> next year comes though, that's the thing. Um, exactly. What about the this spring? Because we've already alluded to, to the fact that the season hasn't quite started yet. I'm guessing that plan A was a trip to badminton with Toledo de Cursa and Figaro van Het Brooks off your, your two top boys. Yeah, exactly. Obviously plan A was badminton, like it was for a lot of people. Um very thankful to British Eventing. So I, I personally think they've done a brilliant job with the with the elite riders uh, and their organisation. There's, there's there's an awful lot to be done, an awful awful lot of loopholes to go through, uh, and they've done a great job. And yes, we're looking forward to getting out to the first well, it's a training event next week at Aston. But um, obviously, yeah, Plan A, the older two, well, was badminton and was really looking forward to it. Um, but as Dicky uh, sort of went to in, in his comment sort of this year the same as last um you're going to be better off the quicker you can react to things and the quicker you can move forward and sort of see a positive in a different direction really yeah have you got a have you got a plan b in place or are you keeping your options open at the moment uh plan b is sort of a multitude of options so basically it's just options are open um there's okay. a couple of different directions i could go in um yeah obviously with with brexit as well it does make things a little bit more complicated a little bit more expensive to go away um and obviously with corona and sort of um sort of traveling and prize money and things it, it does change a few things but uh, i think b are going to do a great job and i think there's going to be uh sort of with everything being cancelled i think there's going to be some releases of some really exciting new events or new or events that are very kindly standing in to take over from from sort of our old mainstay of sort of Brahmins and things like that, that which are going by the wayside at the moment. Yeah, stepping up to kind of offer those opportunities. Can I ask you a little bit about Toledo de Cursa? Because, I mean, he is, oh, of he's one of the best horses in the world. He is a five-star winner. He was fifth at Poe last year. 
where he looked absolutely incredible, particularly on the cross country. Um, what is he like as a horse before we talk a little bit about sort of hopes for, for 2021 with him? Uh, he's an amazing horse, uh, great character. Really, he's an absolute, absolute sportsman, really, if you can define it. Um, he likes his work at home, but he loves his shows more and he prefers his shows to be with less horses and a lot of people. <laughs> um, so COVID's no good for him. <laughs> uh, but no, realistically, he's, um, he's I think he's 14 years now, 14 years old this year. For me, obviously, they're having an easy couple of years. So hopefully, um, you've always got so many miles on the clock at top level. So maybe it might add on a year or two later on. You never know. And for me, he's an out-and-out jumper. Last year, he was phenomenal around Poe. Uh, our preparation wasn't the best because where we kept going to, where, where we kept going to, where we were going to, sort of with our prep plans didn't quite pay off and there was a lot of changing and moving going on he was, he was just a bit fresh when we got to Poe and sort of I think I was ready to go and do a dressage test after Sunday really um he was feeling very well and fine which is no bad thing but realistically how many sort of clears he's jumped show jumping now his speed with his cross country which has really developed uh the dressage which is coming on and on and on yeah, really, he's, he's just he's been a phenomenal horse. It's been a, a, a long process that so I think we take our time, which I think is completely correct thing to do, and I wouldn't change anything if I started again, really. That was a really, really good thing to kind of be able to look back and go, do you know what, actually, we've, we've done it the right way and we've got to this point now where hopefully you've got exciting years ahead, not only with Tokyo, but with top five stars as well. Um, Tokyo is obviously plan a, if we can look at plans at this stage, but that is very much, I know, the aim of the game at the moment. What's the feeling like around the British team? Because it's an exciting team to be involved in, but it's a, a super competitive one to be involved in as well. Well, I think I think you pretty much just summed it up perfectly. <laughs> I think you could probably, a little bit like when uh, I was very lucky enough to go to the first Worlds, even then it was seriously exciting, seriously competitive. I think possibly without the big three days this year, there'll be a surplus of horses as well. Uh, which is great news for the selectors, whether it's good or not. You hear about these football teams and all the injuries they're having because of the Premier League teams having to play all the time. We're actually going the opposite. The horses aren't playing all the time. They're, so they're training at home, which is, um, they all know what they're doing, all the horses from many amazing different riders. And yeah, they're going to have a huge squad to select from, really, of a mighty fine team, really. So actually, looking forward to Tokyo, if you can get yourself to be one of the team members, I mean, it's going to be very exciting, really. It absolutely is. It's going to be exciting to see who makes the cut north because of the team of three aspect, travelling reserve, all of that kind of thing. Do you really enjoy the sort of the team environment? I absolutely love it. Um, it's completely different. Sort of, I know it sounds very sad, but when sort of my favourite days when I was younger was playing sort of rugby and sports at school, which was always a team environment. So for me, I love going back to a team again. Um, it's not just about you. There's many other factors. Uh, I like sort of, I know eventing is is different to many other individual sports because it's you're never really that individual. And if you want to ask for help, there's always someone willing to put their hand out to give you, give you a hand somewhere. So you're never completely by yourself, but actually going as a, as a, as a group with a sort of support group around you and a multitude of people all willing each other to go on as well as one another is, is quite special. And it doesn't happen. Yeah, you get to do it once a year if you're lucky. Yeah, and then Olympics, I guess, adds that extra little frisson of something even more special. Exactly. Um, it'd be about the only things that sort of, sort of most of my friends and things would understand from Olympics, from what I've been doing and why, why I haven't been around on so many occasions, especially when I was younger, when you're sort of um, spending all your time with the horses. So it would actually give them a bit of an understanding that actually all the hours and time that everyone puts in on the yard and everything is, is sort of worthwhile. It's a it's a wider meaning to more people than just our Babton and Burleys, which I know a lot of people in the air, surrounding areas love going to. But actually, it sort of puts you on those pedestals, even with the likes of sort of Usain Bolt, all those people that people sort of really look up to and understand and know. And actually, are idols, you are sort of on the same platform, whether you're, you're in a, the question of eventing or whatever else you might be doing, archery or anything, really. It's, um, yeah, a time to shine on a, a main platform. 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, look, fingers crossed that that plans um, do do all go as they should over the next few months, not only obviously as part of your preparation, but fingers crossed the Olympics will go to plan as well. What about the rest of your yard? Because you, you've mentioned that you've got a, a number of really, really exciting young horses coming through and stepping up to sort of through the four star level. You've got um, a couple of really nice younger, younger horses as well. I know you had a top 10 finish in the Lillian Danger Young Horse World Championships last year. Are there any horses in particular that you can give our listeners as ones to keep an eye on? Yeah, I think I've got a whole load, really. I'm very lucky with the sort of string. I've got, obviously, I've got Toledo and Figure at the top, and they're certainly not in their twilight years by any any stretch of the imagination. Um they're feeling good and fresh. They've got many more years, but um, I've got like a whole team coming up through with the sort of with the two grey boys, which are uh, Dream Away and Bob Chaplin. Um, they'll be stepping up to doing four longs this year. Uh, so for me, it's really about getting going really well, um, getting some great qualifications, and then really looking towards five stars next year, or maybe possibly even at the end of this year. Um, they're two really exciting horses. Uh, it's taken me a bit of time to get to know Bob Chaplin. I've had Dream Away for a little longer, and he's sort of um, he's had some amazing results with the intermediate championships and second at Blenheim what two years ago. Um, he's a very exciting horse, but I think Bob Chaplin's really sort of we've got a bit more of an understanding together. So I think that's that 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 is super exciting. Uh, I've had CHF Coolizer, another horse that's won the intermediate championship. She's sort of looking to go five star this year. Uh, and then from the younger side, like you say, I had um, MHS Brown Jack that went to Leon last year in the six-year-olds. It's something that I don't tend to do is take six-year-olds to Leon because I think it's too much. Obviously, there's no spectators last year, which is sort of a huge factor in that. And it sort of does change the competition completely. But I think he would have coped with that very well. He's a big horse. Uh, and I probably didn't give him as good a ride as I could have done on Sunday. Um and had a couple of rails down, and that is definitely something we need to work on a little bit. But um, it'd be super exciting to go back again next year, and, uh, next year, this year, for the seven-year-olds. And it'd be something definitely I'll be aiming towards. Below that, I've got another French horse, which, uh, which is called Flays de Riveland, who's coming out for the first time this year. Um, she's from the same place where Toledo came from. So that'll be super exciting to see how she gets on, really. So okay. Now attacking me. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of yeah, what kind of dog is it? Just while we're we're on uh, the it's topic, Labrador, but she, she's a puppy. And, oh, yeah, that's totally. She's been acceptable. biting my feet for the majority, and now she's biting my hand, and then she managed to take <laughs> the face. So, yes, a few distractions <laughs> going on. That's all right. It's all good training. All good training. Um, <laughs> can I obviously? just touch upon sort of a, a few of those horses you've mentioned Bob Chaplin who was actually runner-up as a six-year-old in the Lyon with Paul Tatner a yes. few years ago then had a bit of time off but he's he's a horse that you've sort of taken on in the last 12 months or so would it be or is it even a little bit longer than that I actually can't remember with last year being the way it was I can't actually remember I think I had him for the second half of the year two years ago and then I had him last season and then this season um, we had a nice result at Burnham Market in the eight and nine year olds um, and he went really well and obviously we had a lot of plans but then sort of things slowly sort of uh, wilted, <laughs> wilted away towards the end of the year um, so we had a few um, European plans but yeah they went by the wayside which which no bad thing and then we've kept him in training and he's just taken me a little, little bit of time to get to know really He's incredible on the flat, and I think I've expected great things that he should be going around like Vallegra on the flat and sort of jumping like Milton show jumping because these are all things on top you feel that he should be able to do. And it's just taken us a little bit of time to get to know, and for him, I think, just let me in a little bit. He's a he's a funny character, and he's got a lot of draft in him, and he definitely behaves like him. Okay. That's really interesting. What about the the is it Brookfield Benjamin Bounce, the horse that was a uh, on the podium at Le Leon in the seven year olds in twenty nineteen? So will be nine coming this time. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, like I said to you earlier, like, I'm really lucky with my string of horses, and, and actually, it's very hard to pick a few out of them really. But um, yes, he'll be looking to sort of move on up the grades. He's had a, a bit of training last year, um, just without. A load of shows last year it was just difficult to get out as much i felt his balance really come on because it was one thing that 
I thought was a sort of a bit of a factor. He's got a huge, great stride from behind when he's cantering, and it sometimes can be a little bit difficult to anchor back a little bit. And um, yeah, so we're just working on that, and I think it's it's really coming along. He's strengthening up. So yeah, like most things, it all just takes time. Um, but time is one thing we have had at the moment, so it's, it's, it's not the worst thing in the world. We really have. And actually, I suppose this actually leads me on to another question in so much as you've got a really, really nice team of horses that are all building up to that that very, very top level. You're currently ranked number five in the world. There's an Olympics this year, hopefully a Europeans as well. Is a, a sort of an FEI world ranking something that is on your career wish list in terms of reaching the top spot, is that something you've thought about? Perfectly honestly, no. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know why. It's never something that has really worried me. Um, obviously, it's very nice to be right up there. For me, it's more exciting that we're probably going to have a seriously exciting. I hope, and I think we should do, will do a very exciting sort of second half season. A very exciting spectral sport um, with not very much happening for about a year and a half is now season wise uh, on our side of things or sort of over here actually we, like you said we could have Olympics Europeans Burleys um, Leons and Poes and yeah there could be an awful lot and all of a sudden I think there'll be a lot of unseen horses that are actually been training behind behind closed doors that people might not know that might come out and shine really so yeah I, th- I think there's a lot, lot to look forward to but to answer your question no, for me, it's always been about the Babington Burleys. And for me, okay. Babington a bit more just because of where I've lived. Um, sort of near Swindon and Marlborough have always been close. And my dad working there as a vet sort of and going every year. Uh, and then sort of the more I've got into it, like you said, I've, I've loved the team competition. So it's something that I've really wanted to get into. I haven't had the chance to do a whole host of times, but I'd love to a bit more to be honest on my wish list is obviously the big five stars but um Arkan is something that I'd love to tick at some point and oh, okay have you ever been to Arkan at all I have I I, I, have. <laughs> I do dreadfully every time um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but one day I will get it right um I I just find it the most incredible place um for the jumpers who get to, get they sort of they do tend to jet set around the world and go to these amazing places with all this prize money and for them mainly to say that's their favorite show in the world and we get to be part of it is i think for us is quite special uh it's very different and it's also could possibly be a way the sport is going with the short formats mm-hmm. uh and i like the idea that eventing can join up with the other disciplines as well because i think it, it makes it a lot more a spectacle for for fans sorry changing the subject completely but um yeah, so for me, I think it's really exciting. And I also think it's more exciting, Arkham, because it's so German slash Berto um, <laughs> controlled. It kind of counts, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So between all the Germans and Berto, it's quite controlled by them. So actually to go out there and for me, they're all the, be- the best in the world. So to want to be able to go over there and be competitive, for me, it would be something that I'd love to tick off the list because I don't think it's been done by so many Brits it's probably like you said not on many people's wish list but no 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 it actually is on a lot of people's wish list and and a lot of people that have been or that haven't been sort of say I'd really love to go and that do go say it's literally one of the best events in the world I'm frantically racking my brains trying to think if we have had an Arkan British winner and Uh, I'm going back to Zara yeah Yeah. in 2006 I can't think of another one um the Germans have seriously dominated it and as you say Chris Burton as well has won it a couple of times but um that's really really interesting though and I have absolutely no doubt that the team of horses that you're building will certainly stand you in good stead there for the next couple of years um and beyond to be honest Tom because you're only you're in your late 20s so there is a lot still to come Yes, very late 20s, sadly. That's okay. Hold on to the late 20s for as long as possible. Um, I lost my late 20s last year, but lockdown birthdays don't count. So I'm still in denial. Um, Exactly. And I still look 12, so I'm absolutely fine. (laughs) Tom, thank you so much for coming on A Cup of Tea Supported by NAF with us. No problem. Thank you very much for having me. 
It has been an absolute pleasure. Listeners, we hope you've enjoyed the show. I know a lot of you have been asking to hear from Tom so far this year. And a big, big thank you to NAF for coming on board for their support. Do go and take a look at their website. There will be more shows coming over the next couple of months. And we're very, very grateful to them. Uh, but for now, that is all we've got time for. And we'll be back very soon with another episode of the Echo Ratings Eventing Podcast. This is what the Olympic gold medalist, Carl Hester, has to say on Team NAF job in all of this of course is to be able to say to the experts you know this is what I feel the horse is doing this is what I would like it to look like what do you suggest and I'm lucky to be able to have somebody uh, that I can ask those questions to because of course they are the experts they're the people that I have to put my trust in and the horses you know we want to ride on teams we have to think of safe sport we know that NAF leads the way in that I have this really wonderful relationship that I feel is trustworthy I can ask what I like and at the end of the day it's how our horses look and I mean I think we could fa fa safely say that you know when you look at the type of horses we have and the covering of muscle and, and condition that they're in, that things are really working well for us.